My, my name is Naledi Pandor, and I'm the uh, South African Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. Um, I wish to begin by uh, thanking the judges of the International Court of Justice for uh, dealing with this matter expeditiously. Given uh, the urgency of the need to protect innocent uh, civilians uh, in Palestine and to ensure that uh, the harm that South Africa has referred to in the case it brought before the ICJ, that that harm uh, is addressed and that people's lives are saved. The saving of life is not uh, merely with respect uh, to having a ceasefire, it's to ensuring that humanitarian aid is provided uh, to those who need support, as well as ensuring uh, that the State of Israel, uh, which is currently uh, the occupier and administrator in Palestine, provides the necessary basic services that uh, the residents of Gaza and the West Bank require. This case uh, was very much about international bodies ensuring that they exercise their responsibility to protect us all as global citizens. All member states of the United Nations have attached their signatures to a range of instruments. But when lives are threatened, these instruments are not brought to bear. And South Africa had the view that we could not stand idly by and continue to observe the killing of thousands of Palestinian citizens who had no role in the awful act of hostage taking and killing that was uh, done by Hamas. And therefore, we thought it important that we do report and apply to the International Court of Justice that the measures provided within the Convention for the Punishment and Prevention of Genocide are brought to bear and that the State of Israel is called upon uh, by the judges to act to protect civilians and to end the massive level of harm uh, that we have seen since the Israeli uh, action began and we agree entirely with the uh, judges that Hamas uh, should release uh, the hostages that they're currently holding we also, uh, in our various engagements with our partners internationally, believe the moment is now ripe for there to be negotiations for a two-state solution to end this conflict decisively. Minister, are you disappointed if there isn't a ceasefire? Are you disappointed if the court I, I believe that uh, in exercising uh, the uh, order, there would have to be a ceasefire without it the order uh, doesn't actually well, work. I, I, I would have wanted Madam a ceasefire. They didn't specifically call no, they ceasefire. didn't. Are you disappointed but how, that they didn't specify that? In I'm, I have no way that I'm going to say I'm disappointed. I hoped for it, but the fact of delivering humanitarian aid, the fact of taking measures that reduce the levels of harm against persons who have no role in what Israel uh, is combating, for me, requires a ceasefire. And I believe Israel would have to attend to how it conducts its search for the hostages and for those Hamas individuals who carried out the October 7 uh, attack. What's the next step? I believe that uh, the uh, court judgment needs to be read very, very carefully. Uh, they've given very, very direct instructions. Uh, we are satisfied uh, that the provisional measures that we sought uh, to be addressed would be uh, uh, addressed by the court. And uh, I believe if you read the convention very carefully, uh, the matter of uh, how uh, a war uh, or conflict is conducted is not elaborated. I would have wanted that the word cessation uh, is included uh, in the judgment, but I am satisfied with the directives that have been given and in particular I was concerned as uh, the president of the court was reading the order uh, that reference wasn't being made to a report because the reporting is absolutely imperative. The monitoring 
of action in terms of the order is vital. And so for the fact that uh, a monthly report, a report within one month of the state, has been ordered is, I believe, very significant. But what is the state of Germany and the United States who have called this case meritless? Well, the fact that uh, the court says, remember that today we're not deciding about the allegation of genocide. Mm -hmm. What we're dealing with are the provisional measures. It's clear that the court does say circumstances exist where it is plausible that genocidal acts have been committed. This, of course, means once the merit case is addressed, and if the finding is that there has been genocide, those states that have aided and abetted become a party to commission of an infringement in terms of the convention. Do you think Israel will conform to the orders laid down by the court today? I've never really been hopeful of, uh, about, about Israel, uh, but Israel has very powerful friends who I hope uh, will advise Israel that they should act Minister, uh, in terms of the Israel, order. What do, you, what, do you, what do you say? What does it say about Israel as a country and a government and a military? I think that's for you and the public to decide. What we've said is, here's an international instrument. Uh, let us bring it into operation and let's stop being observers uh, of significant harm. Let's act. And South Africa has acted. And what the court has actually indicated is that this convention is being brought to life in a very practical way. And I now think what we want is that the member states of the United Nations uh, must oversee the process and ensure uh, that we create a basis uh, for uh, a global community in which a resort to arms is no longer easy. A resort to abuse is no longer easy and that more effort is now directed toward negotiation and toward seeking peaceful means of ending conflict. And do you think Hamas is behaving genocidally? Well, the as, well as, as far as I understand the convention, states are members, states are signatories, and you bring actions uh, with reference to states not to particular groups. But has Hamas behaved uh, genocidally? Uh, well, uh, I believe that uh, what has been done uh, by Hamas is certainly caused great harm, and I do think that the hostages should be freed, and that's what we must focus so, upon. Madam Minister, Madam Minister, okay, do you believe so, that so, so, the decision of the court will help, let's say, in solving the, the problem of the Israeli aggression against the Palestinians today, and in the short term maybe can help finding a political solution to the uh, conflict between the people, Palestinian people and the Israeli occupation. Well, this is, uh, this, my hope is that uh, we will begin to move toward a process where substantively a two-state solution is being discussed. The people of Palestine have suffered harm for many, many decades. I don't be believe it will end today or tomorrow. But what we've done is a very clear signal has been sent by the court. And it's now a test for the government and people of Israel as to whether they will act in a manner that says all of us must respect international law. And what the are the implications for international law? Well, uh, if, if Israel acts in accord with it, I think the implications are for a future hopeful world. Should it not, then essentially we are opening up room for all abusers in many conflicts throughout the world. And I think we'll be setting a terrible, terrible uh, precedent. So what we should do, what all of us should do, is call on Israel to act in terms of the decisions. Are you separate ties with Israel or are you preserving ties with Israel? I don't think it's a matter of South Africa and Israel here. The real issue, all your questions are about Israel. But the real issue is the people of Palestine who are being killed every day. The people of Palestine who are sleeping in the cold. The people of Palestine who are denied food, water and energy. That is the critical issue that all of us should focus upon. Yeah. And on that note, we're going to ask the yeah. Vice Foreign Minister of... That uh, with the people of Palestine, we stand with the people of Palestine and our message to them is never give up hope. South Africa got over the apartheid oppression they will overcome.